And welcome back to the Brody File. All right, this next story needs a little biblical setup, so let's turn to the Bible. Now, specifically, we want to head to Exodus 20 and the Ten Commandments, where it says, quote, You shall have no other gods before me, and you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above, or on the earth below, or beneath, or in the waters below. So in other words, no idols. God is supposed to be your main focus. Well, let me take you out to Lucy Elementary School in Memphis, Tennessee, where the school assignment was to choose someone that you idolize and write about it. Well, guess what? There was a 10-year-old, her name is Erin, and she was in that class. She decided to choose God. <laughs> the teacher said, uh, no, not going to happen, and her mother protested. How can you tell this baby, who's a Christian, what she can say and what she can't say? I did tell the principal this morning, I said, would it be better if she wrote about Ellen DeGeneres? Of course, there was no comment. A spokesman for the school says that teachers cannot promote religion, but they also admit that there isn't a policy preventing students from writing assignments about God. Oh, by the way, Erin had to pick another idol. She went with Michael Jackson. The school had no problem with that. Stories like this, you know, are making millions of evangelical Christians wonder what in the world is going on with our society today. I mean, gay marriage is everywhere. Prayer taken out of schools decades ago. Abortions are killing millions every year. I mean, what next? Well, I want you to meet a man by the name of David Lane. Lane calls himself a political operative, but let's be clear. He is a very influential, born-again evangelical leader who operates behind the scenes. And his goal is to get more Christians engaged in the political process. He wants them to vote. And in that process, he believes that if evangelicals actually show up at the polls in force, then this country can return to its Judeo-Christian roots. He is the organizer of the Pastors and Pews movement in which he tries and gets pastors and their congregations mobilized and prepared to vote in upcoming elections. Now, I sat down with Lane this past summer in Iowa where he shared some of his thoughts. Look, for lack of a better term, you're, st you're, you're, you're stealth. And you know, when, when I say stealth, a lot of people might think, oh, he's stealth, that means he's up to something. But it, it's not so much, it's not a devious stealth. But, but explain why you have chosen to go more of a private route in all of this rather than, you know, let's face it, you know, you, you could have gone a lot more public than you have with all this. Well, really, it's, a, it's a, people think that I'm a pastor, a lot of people, and I'm actually a political operative. My background's political, and uh, as we've talked before, I was 35 years ago one of the wildest men that ever lived. I deserved judgment, and I got mercy. And so the Lord has put me in this arena, and um, it seems to me that at least for the last 30 years or so, that from an evangelical standpoint, is that I, a lot of our leaders think that press conferences, press releases, and getting an interview with David Brody is, <laughs> is great, and that's, and that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But in politics, it has a different currency, and the currency is how many votes can you bring to the table, or how, many, how much money can you bring that brings votes to the table? Because Russell Kirk said, politicians are actors performing a script that's written by the audience. The audience controls the stage. And so if we're going to turn America back to him, mm. which is what my goal is, I'm real upfront about it. Mm. If the Lord does it, we're going to turn America back to him and reestablish a Christian culture. That's going to be done by pastors and pews of America.